Okay, so our next topic is polynomials. Polynomials. I want to briefly remind you some, some things about polynomials. I'm sure that you've encountered them previously. So polynomials are in fact uh, specific functions. You're going to learn a lot about functions in your calculus classes. And I'm going to denote a polynomial by p for polynomial. And p of x is an expression of the form a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a 2 x squared plus a 1 x plus a 0. So these x is the, is the variable here and we'll, we'll write down several examples in a minute, and these a's with indices are called the coefficients. So this is called the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient. And the, the leading coefficient cannot be zero, because if it's zero, then this term is actually not there, and the polynomial starts here. Okay, the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest power of x that appears in the polynomial. And then the highest power of x that appears in the polynomial is called the degree of the polynomial. So this is the degree, and this is the leading coefficient. Um, we'll write sometimes deg p, or deg p of x. Okay? Okay, so polynomials can, w in this course we'll consider polynomials either over the field of real numbers, meaning that all the coefficients are real numbers, or over the field of complex numbers, meaning that all the coefficients are complex numbers, or in particular real numbers. Okay? And here are some examples, some examples. So x squared minus 6x plus 5 is a polynomial. It's a polynomial of degree 2, right? This, the leading coefficient is 1. This is a polynomial of degree 5. We can think of it as a polynomial over the real numbers because all the coefficients hap happen to be real here. Here's another example uh, in the variable z. Sometimes in order to emphasize that a polynomial is a complex one, we write the variable as z. So z to the power 3 minus i z squared minus z plus i. Here's a polynomial of degree 3 over the complex numbers. I can see that because z kind of hints it, and in fact some of the coefficients are themselves complex numbers here. Okay, here are some more examples, uh, two. This is a polynomial, okay, let just, so you don't think there's this floating number two here. P of x equals two is a polynomial, okay? It's a polynomial of degree zero, because it only has this often called free coefficient, the, the coefficient of, this is in fact x to the power one, and here there's an x to the power zero. Okay, so it only has a free coefficient, the coefficient of x to the power zero, so this is a polynomial of degree zero. Okay, so this is degree zero. This, p of x equals zero, is also a polynomial where the a zero is zero. But remember that we said that the leading coefficient cannot be zero, because if it's zero, this term is gone and it starts here, unless you're looking at this being the leading coefficient. So this is called the zero polynomial. And it's not a polynomial of degree zero, because being of degree zero means that there are x to the power zeros. x to the power zero is one, but here, there are none of those either, because a0 is 0 as well. So we think of p of x equals 0 as a polynomial. The reasons are that we need it in order for the world of polynomials to work, to be well behaved, to work nicely, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what we mean uh, uh, in a bit. For example, sometimes you subtract two polynomials, 
for example, if they're equal, so a polynomial minus itself is going to be this, okay? And its degree, its degree is usually considered to be minus infinity, which is rather bizarre, right? Because it's not the higher power, the highest power of x that appears there. It's just a convention, okay? It works well with things that we're going to see later. So it's sometimes declared as minus infinity. Sometimes it's declared not to have a degree. I prefer, I personally prefer this, and that's what I'm going to going to use. So those are examples of polynomial, polynomials. One more thing I want to mention is that sometimes they're written in short. A short way of writing a polynomial is using this sigma notation. Have you encountered it before? Everybody knows what sigma means? That's great. Okay, let, let me say it in case somebody not sitting here doesn't. So when I write sigma, i equals 1 to n a i x to the power i, this is just a notation for um, i equals, I want to start with 0, right? Yeah, 0 to n. This is just notation. It's just notation. You can not use it ever, but it makes life easier. It makes things more compact. It's just notation for plugging in i equals 0. So you get a 0 x to the power 0, which is just 1, plus plugging in i equals 1. So you get a 1, x to the power 1, which is just x, plus plugging in i equals 2. You get a 2x squared, plus and so on, all the way to plus a n, x to the power n. So it's just the same good old polynomial written in this compact Notation using the letter sigma. Sigma stands, sigma is the Greek S, capital Greek S, stands for uh, sum or summa or, or whatever that l word means in various languages. Even in Hebrew we say schum. Okay, it's almost the same word in many, many languages. Okay, so this just replaces all these pluses and writing explicitly all the uh, terms. You just write one and allow i to run between zero and n. Okay, so this is just notation. Okay, how do we add polynomials? So, uh, some examples, and I, I'm not going to write a fully detailed theory. I, I think you should, you should know it. Uh, it's very easy, but if you don't, uh, hopefully you'll encounter it in tutorials or, 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 or exercises or whatever. But if you don't know this, you have to go to the literature or come and ask and, and figure these details out. You have to know everything that I'm doing here rather briefly. It's not like the complex numbers that we really presented from scratch. Here I'm just kind of collecting and emphasizing stuff, assuming that you know polynomials and you know how to work with them. So for example, suppose I have uh, z squared plus 1. Here's a polynomial, and I want to add to it uh, z to the power 3 minus i z squared minus z plus i. So I'm adding two polynomials, in this case two complex polynomials. I just add like powers. So I have z to the power 3 from here plus 1 minus i, so plus 1 minus i z squared from here and from here, minus z from here, and then I have plus 1 plus i as the free coefficient. That's how I add polynomials. How do I multiply them? So this is example uh, 1. Example 2, let's multiply these two same fellows. z squared plus 1 times z to the power 3 minus i z squared minus z plus i. How do I multiply them? Just like I multiply algebraic ex expressions. Every term here has to meet multiplicatively every term here. And uh, the, it's not hard, you just have to do it carefully, not to skip anything. So when z squared meets z to the power 3, I get z to the power 2 plus 3, I get z to the power 5. Plus, z squared meets this, so I get minus i z to the power 4. 
z squared meets this, so I get minus z to the power 3 and plus i z squared. That was having z squared multiply this entire thing. And then I have plus 1 multiplying this entire thing, so I have plus z to the power 3 minus i z squared minus z plus i. And now all that remains is to collect the terms which correspond to the same power. So I have z to the power 5 minus i z to the power 4 minus z to the power 3 plus z to the power 3 cancel out, so they're gone. And in fact, i z squared and minus i z squared cancel out. So all I have is minus z plus i. So that's how I multiply polynomials. Um, Note what happens to the degrees when you add, the degree is always going to be uh, at most the degree of the highest, uh, the highest degree of the two uh, polynomials that he added, but not necessarily equal to it. So if this one had a minus z to the power 3, you can add two polynomials of degree 3, and the z to the power 3 would cancel out, and you would end up with a polynomial of degree 2 or less. Okay. So I'll write that in a second. Multiplicatively, when you multiply them, the degree is going to be the sum of the degrees of the two polynomials that you added. And that cannot cancel out because it's multiplicative. And these are never zero, okay? the leading coefficients. So let me write that. Um, remarks. Um, the degree of a sum is less than or equal to the maximal degree of the two components. So the maximum between the degree of P and the degree of Q. That's what it could be at most. It could be less if things cancel out. The degree of a product equals, equals the sum of the degrees. As I will say, as I have said, and as I will say many, many times in this course, don't try to memorize things like this. Memorizing is a, a, a definite recipe for forgetting. That's what memorizing is about, forgetting it later. Understand. Understand what the statements were just a couple of minutes ago, how I got to these conclusions, and then you can get to these conclusions at any time, and it'll take you a few seconds, and, and you don't need to memorize, and then you won't forget, because you understand there's nothing to memorize, there's nothing to forget. Okay? Okay. Um, you can verify that many properties that we know from numbers extend to polynomials. So, for example, if you multiply two polynomials, p times q or q times p, you would get the same thing. So multiplication of polynomials is commutative. If you do p plus q plus p, sorry, p plus q plus, let's say, r, or p plus q plus r, or p plus q plus r, you would get the same thing. So addition of polynomials is, what's that, associative, right? So properties of what we call the field extend to addition and multiplication of polynomials, However, polynomials are not a field. There's something missing. Don't, don't, don't say it. I want you to think about it. Okay? So, uh, polynomials satisfy properties uh, um, let's say polynomials with Addition of polynomials and multiplication of polynomials satisfy properties like uh, commutativity, associativity, but they are not a field. So remember, fields have 11 axioms. Try thinking which of these 11 axioms fails for polynomials. What don't you have in polynomials 
that, that uh, um, doesn't allow them to be considered a field, and they're not. Okay? They're, they are uh, a structure that we did not mention, something that has all properties of a group, but more. It, it's more in the direction of a field, but not a field. It's called a ring. Polynomials are what's called a ring. We're not going to talk about rings in this course. I'm just mentioning it. Okay, so this is kind of an introduction to polynomials. What I want to do, but this is going to be next time, what I want to do is say just a bit more about them. Uh, some theorems, I'm not necessarily going to prove them, just mention them, and in particular a bit of discussion of, of how we find roots of polynomials, okay? How we find numbers that satisfy that the polynomial equals zero. That's what we call a root of a polynomial. And in particular, we're going to mention uh, a theorem that's called the fundamental theorem of algebra, giving it a lot of respect, that says that polynomials over the field of complex numbers, a polynomial of degree n, always has n roots. Okay? And that theorem we're not going to be able to prove because the proof, in fact, goes beyond algebraic tools. The proof goes via tools of complex analysis. And so we're just going to mention it and not prove it, and several other kind of little theorems and techniques, that's going to be next time.